Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Hope y'all are having a great start to the day. I am Candy Barone, and we are live from Austin, Texas with uh, coffee chats from Coach Candy. So good morning. Hope you got your coffee. Hope you're ready to go. Today I am going to dig into some training. It is Tuesday training and uh, if you don't know we've got a theme every day. So it is Monday motivation or Monday mindset which is all about helping you reset, restructure and really look at how to level up your mindset, um, let go of some of those beliefs, those stories, those things that just don't serve. So Monday is all around focusing on our mindset, getting the week started off right. Tuesdays are all a training segment. This is an opportunity to give you skills and strategies that are gonna significantly move you forward in a capacity uh, to really open up more for your life, uh, open up more for yourself. And so today is all about a training segment we're gonna get to in just a moment. Wednesdays are wonder days. They are really going to be a day that we talk about how to move out of that negative anchoring um, what if into a powerful um, and just incredible imaginative space. Thursday is all about a throwdown. So it'll be the day that I challenge you to get out of your comfort zone and we're gonna lay, so, lay the gauntlet down and see if you're willing for the, uh, the challenge. And then Friday is all about Feature Friday. And so um, that is gonna be a day that I'm gonna share resources, tools, books, podcasts, things that have significantly changed my life. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I read a book a week. So always wanting to share new, juicy, awesome information that I get real time with you. So all that being said, welcome. Glad y'all are here. Let's dig into Tuesday's training. Uh, today is all about your morning. And so for those of you that have been with me for a while, those of you that I've worked with, you know that I talk about your mornings a lot. I beat this drum constantly. I want you to understand that this is single-handedly the most critical aspect of your day. Um, if you don't believe me, there are just studies upon studies upon studies that talk about how your morning sets the tone for everything and is going to be indicative whether or not you are playing full out, playing your best game and just crushing it so that you can succeed um, at greater levels. Hello, Roseanne, nice to see you. Um, so I wanna talk about why your morning is so important and I wanna give you some tools. Good morning, Elaine. I want to give you some tools as to how to really be intentional about your morning. Um, one of the books, resources that I'll share with you later on is called The 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma. Um, I will say that that drastically has changed my life. And even before I read that book and before I got into that space, uh, I really, um, yay, good morning, good morning, hello ladies. Um, really got in a space where I believe in what I call the bookends, how you start your day and how you finish your day is everything. Today we're just going to focus on the morning because there's so much I want to jump into about why being intentional about your morning, how you set your structure, what that looks like, what that means. Good morning, Terry. Um, I want to really spend time this morning just focused on the morning aspect of the bookends. Later on we will, happy sunny Monday, actually it's Tuesday today, but Excellent, still be a new Monday, always. Um, and so I want you to realize that while we are gonna talk about the bookends in its entirety um, over time, and I'm gonna bring in principles from Robin Sharma's 5 a.m. club, I wanna start with just the basics today. I wanna get into a space where we are, are um, oh, morning, I love that. Um, so I wanna get into a space of how to structure your morning and why it's so critical. So first and foremost, I will tell you, I was a self-proclaimed, not a morning person. I was very clear I was not a morning person. Morning's not my thing. I get my energy late afternoon in the evening. And it's a story that I have stood by, I have held onto. It is a belief that I've had my entire life. I even remember back, I don't know, maybe about eight years ago, I was doing a boot camp at 5.30 in the morning. Yes, I know, a bit crazy. And uh, so I was getting up at 4.30 in the morning and I got up every day and I did this for seven months straight. And everybody's like, oh, you have a new habit, you have a new space that you're in, now you're a morning person. I'm like, mm, not really. And um, what was interesting about that is when I found out I had to have Achilles surgery, which let me tell you, not fun, um, and will never do again. It was the worst surgery I've had out of the five I've had in my lifetime. Uh, when I found out I had a kill, needed to have Achilles surgery, um, I kind of was like all bets off. And what was interesting is the minute I 
allowed myself to tap back into that old story, I found I wasn't able to get up till 7, 7.30 in the morning. And that was my reality for the last, I don't know, eight years or so. I have been a person that just naturally gets up at, you know, eight, at 7, 7.30, kind of gets my day going. And it wasn't until I really started to take inventory about how I was starting my day now, even when I started it at 7, 7.30, so for some of you that might be later risers, I do still believe in the, the idea that it's not just about early to bed, early to rise that makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. I also think late to bed, late to rise can do the same. It's all about how you focus and how you structure your time when you're awake. And so regardless of the fact that I now get up at 5 a.m., yes, a self-proclaimed, I am not a morning person, is now up at 5 a.m. In fact, I've had two and a half hours of amazing, deep work, productive time that has been non-internet, non-cell phone, non anybody else's stuff and it's all been about me being able to show up in a way to serve powerfully today and so with that being said getting up at 5 a.m. actually is a lot easier than I thought it was and it was about shifting that mindset you know yesterday we talked a little bit about obligation and opportunity I want you to think about the fact that you get to choose inside that space and so what makes the morning so powerful first and foremost most of the time what happens is people wake up and they've got their face in this gadget before they've even climbed out of bed. I wanna tell you that I really wanna urge, and when we talk about the evening routine, I'm gonna really invite and challenge you to not have technology in your bedroom at all. It makes a huge difference. It's too easy in the middle of the night when you wake up. It's too easy when you're looking at, good morning, Michelle. It's too easy that when you wake up in the middle of the night and you turn over to see what time it is for you to just hit your phone and then get caught into a series of, ooh, let me just check that text message. Ooh, let me just see what's going on on Facebook. Ooh, let me, and then you've just completely disrupted your sleep pattern. Not to mention the fact that when you wake up in the morning, this tends to be the first thing people reach for. What's sad is there are more and more statistics that say that people are reaching for their phone before they are saying good morning to loved ones, before they are having gratitude for another day, before they are putting themselves in a space to show up and lead powerfully and serve and here's the thing that I want you to know is when you start getting in your technology when you're in your cell phone first when you're in your iPad or your computer I don't care what the technology is you're already being led before you can put yourself in a position to lead and so I want you to good morning Cindy I want you to really think powerfully about how you are choosing to show up. So first and foremost, this is the first moment I am on technology is here with you. It's two and a half hours after I woke up. So 5 a.m., right? So let me give you kind of a rundown of how I run my morning. There are three components I want you to think about that are absolutely critical when you first wake up in the morning. So when you wake up, and I would say actually Four, because the first thing you need to do is really put yourself in a place of gratitude to acknowledge the fact that you get another day to show up as your best and highest self. So you get opportunity, and yes, you get to buy a new alarm clock and go back to paper devotional so that you can get your phone out of your bedroom. Yes, I love that, and we're going to talk about that just a little bit more. I really urge you to get the electronics out of your bedroom. Not only is the vibration, the frequency, and the energy from them disrupting your sleep, also that tendency to want to just get in there and be like, oh, I just need to look at something before I can fall back to sleep. It's amazing how getting technology out of your room will improve drastically the quality of your sleep so that you feel refreshed and renewed and can get up earlier with more intention. And so what I want you to think about is I want you to think about first putting yourself in a place of gratitude. Before your feet even hit the ground, I want you to acknowledge the blessing that you've been given for another day. Because we sometimes forget that tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not something that is a guarantee that we're going to get simply because, hey, today happened. Tomorrow is not a guarantee, and we forget to take that moment. We forget to thank our higher power, thank God, the universe source, thank just life itself, whatever you believe in, to say thank you for another day. So I want you to really put yourself in a position that before you even get out of bed, when you open your eyes in the morning, because again, it's that, oh, I have to get up that we talked about yesterday. Oh, I get to get up. I get to show up again today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me breath for one more day to show up and lead. So that is the first thing I want you to do before you even get out of bed. 
Now, once you get out of the bed and you take care of, you know, your normal, you know, you got to brush your teeth, go to the bathroom, make your bed. I will tell you that making your bed is also a powerful strategy in the morning. And there's a reason why, because it already sets you up sub subconsciously to know that you accomplished something. It is amazing the power of something as simple as making your bed, how that can set the tone for how you're showing up for the rest of your day. Because you already get to go, yep, got that one done. And subconsciously, it starts to create confidence and power so that you then realize that you can do all the things that you set your mind to. So I want you to think about now that you've gotten up, you've had your gratitude, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then what I want you to do is get up, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, do what you got to do. And then I want you to make your bed. I know, simple task, make your bed. It's amazing what that does. And neurologically, there have been amazing studies that show what that does on a subconscious level to fire up our confidence and belief that we can accomplish the things that we set intention for for the day. So those are the two things before you've even like left your bedroom. Then there are three things I want you to think about how you're filling your cup and how you're setting intention for the day. The first one is nourishing and energizing your body. So I want you to think about getting water into your body. So think about the fact that you've been asleep for seven or eight hours if you are getting a good quality night's sleep. And like I said, we're gonna talk about the evening routine and we're gonna talk about your sleep a little later on. But I want you to realize that you need to rehydrate. You have been in a position where you have been dehydrated for eight hours. You have been sleeping. So one of the ways to get your body energized, one of the ways to wake up in the morning is to hydrate yourself, is to get a glass of water in your system, is to let your body wake up. There's oxygen in water. Your body starts to oxygen, oxygenate oxygen gets oxygen in the body I can't speak this morning and it starts to wake up your cells and your body and your energy so that you can do the next thing which is move your body I want you to do something that actually makes you sweat I want you to do something that gets your heart rate pumping something that has a little bit of a cardiovascular um, aspect to it something that gets your blood pumping and gets you into a place where your cells are wide open where you are getting energy and oxygen in your blood and your cortisol levels are going and your endorphins are going and your everything's firing on all cylinders it's amazing what happens when you move first thing in the morning before anything else so you've done your gratitude you've made your bed you've done the the kind of like the 15 minute housekeeping stuff to get yourself just going. And then what I want you to do is hydrate and move your body, significantly move your body. Good morning, Ramartha. Good morning, Janine. Wow, love to see everybody on today. Um, so I want you to powerfully move your body. I want you to get a sweat. I want you to get the endorphins and the, 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 the energy in your body just firing. Because what that does is it not only wakes your body up, it wakes your mind up. You will find that your attention to focus, your alertness, your ability to truly get clear on what intention you want to set for the day will be like just bam, 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 firing on all cylinders. So when you move your body, you start to wake up not only your the physical aspect of your body, but you wake up your mind, your spirit, your emotional well-being. And all you need to do is 15, 20 minutes. And I'm going to talk about it, creating this power hour for yourself, right? This victory hour, this power hour. Mine is more like an hour and a half. I will tell you for some of you that say, I don't have an hour in the morning, then start with 30 minutes. Start with 30 minutes where you're doing 10 minutes to nourish and move your body. You're doing 10 minutes to reflect and allow yourself to have that deep work spiritually to have that work with God, universe, source, whatever it is, to journal, to meditate, to do something that brings you back to who you are so that you get to decide how you want to show up for the day. It is so critical that after you've woken your body up, now that you're awake, you're firing on all cylinders, you feel like you're energized, everything's kind of pinging, your endorphins are going, that then you get into a space to deeply connect with who you are, to deeply connect in a space that says, okay, how do I choose to show up today? Because remember, leadership's a function of how you choose to show up and how you choose to serve. So you've got to put yourself in a place to get really fine-tuned and really focused around what does that look like? 
So I want you to say, okay, so what's important to me for today? What's my why? I want you to think about meditating or journaling. And again, if you've only got a half an hour, start with a half an hour and do 10 minutes of movement, 10 minutes of reflection, and then 10 minutes of a growth space or intention space. And so what do I mean by that? That's a space where maybe you're listening to a really uplifting, powerful, motivational podcast. Maybe it's an opportunity that you're filling out um, your planner for the day. And I'm going to show you and walk you through what I do exactly just to give you an idea of how my morning moves. Now, like I said, my power hour usually is more like an hour and a half because I really want to give myself that time. And so I actually have about two, two and a half hours in the morning that are sacred time before I get on and have conversations with you, before I get to show up and lead, before I do any work, I spend that time to create a space that says, this is how I choose to show up today. This is how I want to serve, and this is what's important to me. And then, like I said, on the back end, I'll talk about that another day. How do you really put yourself in a space to close out the day, reflect, and powerfully charge yourself to go to sleep so that you get good quality sleep and you can get up and do that again? So, for example, so I'd love to hear some comments, thoughts about things from the rest of you. Feel free to kind of chime in. I see all of you on. Love that you're here this morning. I um, want you to share some of the things that you do for your morning routine if you have a morning routine. So I guess that's my first question. How many of you actually have a solid, disciplined morning routine that is sacred, non-technology space? That is all about you filling your cup so that you can show up and serve. I'm curious, how many of you actually have a morning routine? So I take a sip of coffee. <laughs> so I'm waiting. Let's see where we go here. Okay, just waiting to get some thoughts from you guys. Terry, your coffee talks have become my inspiration time each morning. I love that. Um, and thank you. And thank you all for showing up for this because this, this works because we're here as a community, right? And it's interesting because I had somebody actually ask me why I was doing a 7.30 a.m. Facebook Live. And it's exactly that reason. I want to be part of what helps you get fired up and intentional about how to lead in your day and how to show up and how to serve. And so if I can offer some nuggets that are going to help you get crystal clear, that are going to help you start to focus and fire on the things that are most important, then I want to be able to serve you in that capacity. So I love that. Um, let's see. Oh, Meg, good morning. You do. Awesome. Love that you have a morning routine. I have a solid discipline routine that I do about every other day. Hey, that's a start. I love that. I guess that's not discipline. Every other day. Janine, nope. Okay. Gratitude journal every day. Awesome. So I love that some of you have pieces of how to build your morning routine. Let's talk about how to create a more solid discipline because again, your morning is the most critical aspect of your day. If you want any chance of playing full out, having your best, most energetic, most fulfilling, most joyful day, then your morning is everything and it needs to be a non-negotiable for you. This is one of those necessity needs, not the need I talked about yesterday, it was the obligation, that's the I need to do this. This is the necessity. If you really wanna show up and play, out, play at your highest and best level, then this is a necessity in your life. And so here's how my morning went this morning, just to give you an example. I got up at 5 a.m. Um, and actually I got, I was actually awake at 4.30. It's amazing when you start to reset that belief. Like I said, self-proclaimed, not a morning person. I hate mornings. That was my whole story for the last almost 46 years. What's amazing is since I've rewritten that story, and you can choose a different story at any time, it's amazing how often I'm getting up before my alarm even goes off at 5 a.m. And my alarm being non-technology, like a real, honest to God, alarm that costs like seven bucks you can put in your room. They work really well, just saying. So anyway, I got up at 5 a.m. Typically when I get up at 5 a.m., Peyton, my dog, he has still proclaimed he's not a morning dog. <laughs> I was going to say person, but in my sake and purposes, he is a person. Um, but he is not a morning dog. He usually puts his paws over his face, and he's like, no, mama, no, not right now. Or he buries his head and jumps in my bed and buries his head in that blanket. What I've noticed is my dog is changing his story, too, because this morning at 5 a.m., usually I can get right into my routine. This morning, Peyton was ready to go outside. So I adjusted my routine a little bit where I got up, brushed my – I said my gratitude before I got out of bed. 
I got up, brushed my teeth, went to the bathroom, and then I made my bed. Again, making your bed already creates a significant momentum for how you show up in your day. So I made my bed. Peyton sat there ready to go, and I'm like, all right, I guess I'm taking him out first. And so I took Peyton out so that he could go to the bathroom, came back inside, and then hit my workout. I did a 20-minute hit workout. I did some kickboxing this morning, got fired up, got myself all kinds of like energized, got a good sweat in, got the endorphins pumping. And then what I did is, because I usually need a little cool down space after working out. Some of you may choose to shower right away. However you want to organize, this is fine. I need to cool down when I'm sweating like that. My body gets all kinds of like crazy. And so I sat down then and did my journaling. And right now my journaling is my 5x55 manifestation, which is another tool I will train later. So don't worry about that. what that is right now. I'm just kind of playing it in the seed that we're going to talk about that later. But it's my space to either journal. It's my space to read something uplifting and spiritual. So the first thing I did before I even journaled was I read my daily passage from this book here called The Book of Awakening. It's amazing how every day there is a message that really sets you up to open up yourself. And so, for example, I'm actually going to read the short passage today that I read for myself. So March 26th, and every day there's a different passage. And what's nice about this is you can do this all year long, every year, and keep coming back to some of these amazing messages. So the message for today is, and this is what I started my reflection space with, feeling your feelings. The fastest way to freedom is to feel your feelings. Gita Bellin. This sounds pretty simple, but though it's easy to know you have feelings, easy to know their weight and agitation and suddenness of mood, it is another more subtle matter to feel them. That is to let them penetrate your being the way the wind snaps through a flag. This is necessary because if we don't feel our feelings all the way through, they never leave us. And then when we do all kinds of unusual things to get out from under them, this is the cause of many an addiction. I diverted myself many times by becoming involved in what surrounds my pain or sadness while never feeling the thing itself. So when someone asks me how I feel, I wind up retelling the circumstances of the pain, but not feeling it. Or strategizing what to do next, but not feeling it. Or anticipating reactions, but not feeling what is mine to feel. Or swimming in the anger of injustice, but not diving through the wound. Through, though we fear it, feeling our feelings is the only clear and direct way to free our hearts of pain. And so here's the, challenge, the invitation. Meditate on the ways you might avoid your feelings. In your silence, stop holding them off with words or reasons or busyness. Simply be a sure and let your feelings wash against you like the waves takes two minutes to read that. And so after I've just done a hard workout, I'm sweating, my body is so awake, what I do is I feed myself with a little inspiration so that I can start to connect into a place that says this is meaningful. And then like I said, I today did my five by 55 manifestation, which is a way for me to focus on what I'm calling towards me. And like I said, I'll train this on a different day. Or I might journal. This is my opportunity to journal and reflect on what that passage was. The other thing that I do, and because today I did my 5 by 55 and because I was doing, getting some other things filling my soul, I will move my meditation to another part in my day. In fact, probably when I get off with you guys, I will put myself in a place to meditate. But those are the ways that I connect deeply into my soul. Hello, Lisa. Great to see you. Um, and so then the third piece is when I get done with, that piece of reading that passage, journaling, doing my manifestation process. Then what I do is I pull out my planner, which those of you know, I'm a huge Brendan Burchard fan. I get out my high performance planner and I set my intentions for the day. And the reason I love this planner is it really does ask some big questions on how you are intentionally going to be focused, how you're going to choose to show up and how you're going to choose to serve. And so thinking about, okay, what are my three priorities? What are the ways that I want to serve? What's the message or mantra I have for myself? So I love that that gives you a space to think clearly about that. I took a shower, and then what I did is I spent some time, after I took that hour, 
to nurture myself and it was about an hour and 15 minutes. I then laid next to Peyton and I got some puppy snuggles and I spent some time to really connect to the thing that matters most to me in my life, which is my dog. And so I was then able to give myself fully as he was all snuggled up because again, he's not a morning dog um, and let myself really connect and be with him. And so as I'm reading some of the comments that you have, I love Elaine, my prayer before I get out of bed every day. Thank you for all you have given me. Thank you for all you have taken and thank you for all you have left me with. How beautiful is that? I love that. Thank you so much for sharing, Elaine. Martha, I love that you'll be heading out for a nature walk this morning. Yes, that's the other thing that I'll do. Because here's the thing most of you don't realize. I don't get into my workday. This is a different space. This is because I want to connect and I want to give you resources to powerfully start your day. Otherwise, I don't touch technology. I don't get into my Facebook. I don't get into my email. I don't do any of that work till later in the day. Because even when I start my day, which is usually around 9 o'clock when I'm doing work, then it's my highest, best quality work. That's when I'm like locked in, dialed in on the stuff that's going to allow me to move things to the next level. It's not about the ticky-tacky cleaning up email and responding to messages and getting in social media. It's about where am I going to have my best impact and influence in the work that I do. And I give myself kind of like a 90 minute just frame to go deep. And then I give myself a series of power hours. And again, those are things that I'm going to be talking about and training more later. Right now, I just want you to get locked in, dialed into your morning. But that nature walk, that way to connect, that will be I will get off this call with you and then I will go back into my practice of meditation. I will take Peyton for a nice walk as the sun's coming up and it's just beautiful and crisp outside and that will end my morning ritual so that then I can powerfully show up for the rest of my day and do work that's really meaningful. Good morning, Errol. Great to see you. Um, I'm really powerful in that sense. And so my challenge for you is, as I'm sharing these tools with you, how are you going to dial in? How are you going to get more focused? And how are you gonna truly own your morning to elevate your life, as Robin Sharma would say? I want you to realize that your morning is everything. Oh, good morning, Tanisha. Good morning, RG. Great to see you. Good morning. Um, and for those of you jumping on, we are talking about owning your morning. We are talking about why it is the most critical aspect of your day, and it needs to be a non-negotiable in terms of what you're doing to fill your cup first before you can put yourself in any position to serve, to lead, to show up, to give of yourself. And for those of you who are like, oh, my kids get me up, then get up earlier. I told you I got up at 5 a.m. this morning. I've had two and a half hours before even showing up for you to do things that were meaningful to fill my cup. And it starts with having gratitude before your feet hits the ground. Gratitude for the fact that you have another day. And then do something as simple as make your bed. Subconsciously, it triggers you to say, I just succeeded and accomplished something. I'm ready for anything else that comes. A simple task like making your bed makes a huge difference. Love, let's see what Terry's got. I do best when I introduce one thing at a time. So getting consistent with my morning intention with the high performance planner needs to be a focus. And I use the notes line at the bottom of the page to be my gratitude reflection each morning and evening. I love that. Yes. So even with what I'm sharing with you, while there's multiple components inside of your morning ritual, start with one. Start with one thing that you can start to put into practice and create a consistent discipline. And by the way, most of you think, oh, it takes 21 days to build a habit. That's what they tell us. No, it takes 21 days for you to believe that that habit is possible. It then takes another 20, and it actually takes 22 days. There's a 66-day cycle. It takes 22 days for your belief to say, okay, this is a possibility for me. I can probably do this. Then it takes the next 22 days for you to fight through all of your resistance, your beliefs, the fact that, oh my God, this sucks. I can't believe I'm doing this. This is hard. Then you get into the third set of 22 days, which is the space that says, wow, this is becoming an automated discipline. This is the same as when I first learned to brush my teeth or when I first learned to ride my bike or when I first learned to walk. If you think about the process of how you went through that as a child, you didn't always know how to brush your teeth. You had to be taught that discipline that now it's an automatic habit. Like I don't even think about brushing my teeth and flossing at night. 
it's just something I do. I can't even imagine going to bed not doing it. It's not, it doesn't require me to be present. It requires me to just, okay, here's what I do before I go to bed. There's a routine. So in order for you to make your morning a routine that works for you, know that it's going to take 66 days fully through that cycle of consistent discipline for you to be able to level up and have something that's now an automated consistent process. And so I want you to realize that you can start with just the gratitude piece. Just start with having gratitude for the fact that today was not guaranteed and that you've gotten, you have another day to show up. You get another day that you are blessed and that you have an opportunity to show up and serve at a, at a higher and bigger level than you did yesterday. Then I want you to think about one accomplishment, make your bed. It's so simple. I can't even leave my room without making my bed. Even on a day that I'm going to do the sheets, I make it enough so that Peyton can snuggle in there, but I make it enough because making my bed is a discipline I do every day. And then I want you to think about the three spaces to fill for yourself before you show up and start giving to everybody else. And one is that space of nurturing your body. So I want you to hydrate and I want you to move and create a sweat for 15, 20 minutes a day. I want you to get the endorphins and the energy and the oxygen moving in your body. Then I want you to spend the time to reflect, to create a space to really connect deeply and powerfully with who you are. I want that to be either you're, you're reading a beautiful passage, you're doing your mantras, affirmations, journaling, meditate, whatever it might be, that space that is just for you to get connected. And then the third piece is how are you going to set your intention and how are you going to grow? What are you going to feed yourself with so that you're showing up with clear focus, you know your priorities, you have a game plan for the day, and you've got something that's inspiring, motivating you, and telling you, yes, let's do this. So questions about that before I kind of wrap this up. Oh, wonderful. Love that, RG. Um, questions about that. Wanted to make sure that we start Tuesday trainings powerfully with probably single-handedly the most important training, which is recapturing, reclaiming, and owning your morning full out. I guarantee that if you do that, if you're willing to stretch, if you're willing to push yourself to create the disciplines in the morning and stop telling yourself the bullshit story that I'm not a morning person, I got my kids to take care of, I got this, 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 and this, and this, I want you to hear your excuses and tell your excuses to sit down, shut up, you got this. And then I want you to take control and make a different choice. You will see significant differences in your life, regardless of what time you get up, if you powerfully own the first half hour to hour. And for those of you that have never done this, try the first half hour. For those of you that have been doing this, I'm going to stretch you for an hour or 90 minutes. I want you to claim that time as non-negotiable time for you. It is absolutely time for you to be selfful. It is not selfish for you to put yourself first. You cannot serve anybody else unless you are playing at your highest and best level. So with that, Oh, so excited that you all jumped on this morning. I love this. I love that you're here participating in this conversation. I am going to ask you how your morning routines are going. Um, hope that you'll continue to show up at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. I will be here every day, Monday through Friday. Tomorrow is Wednesday Wonder. So we are going to play in the space of imagine if and imagine the possibilities and just disrupt that space of what if that holds us back. So stay tuned. We are going to have some fun tomorrow. Until then, be intentional, be passionate, be purposeful, and be the leader that you are destined to be. I will catch up with you all tomorrow. This is Candy, sending you heart-to-heart -heart hugs. I love you all. Oh, I feel most alive when I work out at 5 a.m. To make it happen, I sleep in my workout clothes. Yes, I actually did that same thing. Slept in my workout clothes. Do whatever you got to do. And like I said, we're going to talk about evening ritual next week um, so that you can actually set yourself up for success um, along the way. Um, love, keep sending your comments. I will respond. If you comment, if you're watching this, if some thoughts come up, you want to ask questions, please comment on the thread. I go back and I check this and I will answer every question, every post. Um, that is my intention and promise for you. So with that, I hope y'all make it a fantastic day. I will see y'all tomorrow.